Well, good morning, everybody. Well, that's pretty rousing considering that uh, we're just post Thanksgiving here. I, I hope that everybody had a very meaningful Thanksgiving and we all lost 10 pounds. So, but we know that's not the case. This is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This time, Patty will lead us forward in the announcements and the beginning of the worship. Good morning, everyone. We are blessed to have this beautiful day, even though we have a little snow. It's, it's still a good day. A couple announcements for the church this morning is there is coffee hour after the service, after we decorate. We need your help. We are also um, inviting you to purchase mittens, gloves, scarves again for under the tree for the needy. There are still some cake pans downstairs from the chili supper. If anyone is uh, forgetting to pick them up, please go down and pick those up. And our poinsettias purchase this year is $12. And if you can have that in by the 10th of December, that will be wonderful. We have birthdays for Noreen Portowells, an anniversary for Reverend Greg and Grace. Again, our monthly mission is paper products and cleaning for the Friends Incorporated. Any other announcements for the church? Gila? at the coffee hour, after we decorate. <laughs> if there are no other announcements, please stand for our call to worship. We are here because we have heard the call of Jesus in our lives. We are we're here, here to, to challenge and support one, one another, another to rise, rise up, up and follow. follow. We are here because we want to be God's people. We come, we come seeking, seeking to be moved, moved changed, changed, and, and made, made whole, whole by the, the Spirit of the living God. God. Let us Let open our hearts to the moving of the, of the Spirit and prepare to leave this place as true, true disciples of Christ. of Christ. Amen. Let's join together in our opening prayer. Amazing God, you have, have shaped, shaped the world, world in wonder and, and mystery. mystery. With, with thanks, thanks we, we contemplate the unseen world with all of its realities. realities. You have created us so that we live as citizens of worlds seen and unseen. Help our creatures to live so that your spirit may become visible in our actions and relationships through the grace of Jesus Christ, who shared our earthly life. Amen. Let's join together now in our opening hymn, Come, Thou Almighty King.
love and adore. Would you please be seated? We have so much to be thankful for. We are on the cusp this time of preparing our hearts for the coming of Christ Emmanuel, for love coming into the world, the love that the world has not known the likes of prior to his coming. That love abides. That gives us the freedom if we come to realize how much we are loved to confess our sins, our mistakes, where we stumble and fall, where we struggle, where we get frustrated, where we say things perhaps that we shouldn't say, all of those things, that Christ is willing to accept that and does accept that. So in a spirit of confession, would you please join together with me in our prayer of confession? Let us pray. O oh Christ, if we carry the name Christian, we are signs of your presence. Yet we confess that we sometimes hurt people through our pride, rather than showing the way to the healing waters of your spirit. When we are discouraged ourselves, we are unable to be signs of joy or hope or good news. Forgive us and give us grace to be, to be earthly reminders of your love. Amen. Would you please join me in our assurance of pardon? The good news is that we don't have to depend upon ourselves, but on the Spirit of God to give us vitality. Thanks be to God. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be world without end amen amen let's take a few moments and greet each other in christian love pass a piece of christ or give each other the holy hug
Please be seated. Our Old Testament reading is Haggai, chapter 2, verses 3 through 7. Who is left among you who saw this house in its former glory? How does it look to you now? It is not in your sight as nothing. Yet now take courage, O Zerubbabel, says the Lord. Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel. <laughs> take courage, O Joshua, son of Zehozadak. The high priest, take courage, all you people of the land, says the Lord. Work, for I am with you, says the Lord of hosts, according to the promise that I made you when you came out of Egypt. My spirit abides among you, do not fear. For thus says the Lord of hosts, once again, in a little while I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land, and I will shake all the nations so that the treasure of all nations will come, and I will fill this house with splendor, says the Lord of the hosts. When I was reading through the Old Testament reading that Patty read, you know, every once in a while we're going to have those, those kind of names that say, I'm not going to get there and do that, but you did a good job, Patty. We're all in this together. We're all in this together, part of awesome worship team, so... So maybe we'll have a time when we can just pronounce all of those different weird names. The gospel lesson, similar to the, the, the text in Haggai, is Matthew 13, verses 10 through 13. And the disciples came and asked him, why do you speak to them in parables? And he answered, to you it's been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. For to those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance, but those who have nothing, even what they have, will be taken away. The reason I speak to them in parables is that, and there's the operative words, seeing they do not perceive, and hearing they do not listen, nor do they understand. All right. Hey, guys, you want to come up here with me this morning and help me out? i tell you a story, but then I need your help finding something. I guess some little white thing I'm looking for. Okay? So, all right. Come on up. You guys look like you've got some leftover turkey coma. How you guys doing today? Good, good. Hello. Oh. You know, Emily, what do you think? Can you hear them? Loud and clear. Loud and clear. Good, good. So, uh, do you guys ever go hunting for mushrooms in the spring? Looking for, like, morel mushrooms? Anybody here do that? I know in Indiana that's huge. People take off work to do that, you know? Uh, have you ever looked for something and other people can see it, but you can't see it? I want you to help me find something. Now, I'm going to give you a hint. I'm looking for something white, and it's going to require a special kind of looking very closely. Something white that's hidden in something white. And it's not going to be anywhere out there. It's going to be somewhere right in here. In fact, we'll make it right here in these two plants. you got two white poinsettias. Uh, so, do you think it might be in there? So, get up and look, guys. See what you can find. There's one in here. No, no. It's going to be in a plant. It's going to be... I'm giving you lots of hints here. There's something... Oh, no, 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 no. Not that. Keep looking. You're so close, though. You're so close. Please. No, no. Your brothers, your brothers, you know how you're getting warmer and warmer and warmer? You're cold. Warmer, <laughs> warmer. Warmer. It's over there. Now, look carefully. It requires you you look carefully. Carefully. It's a little white round thing. A little white round thing. No. No. You're getting colder. Both of you are getting colder. You're getting a little warmer. You're almost hot. Warm. Hey, this one's working. Uh, no. No. Uh, guys, come here. I want you to look. Yeah. Oh, I only got one. You can grab another one, maybe if they let you do your grandma and grandma. Let's have a word of prayer here. Let's talk about that, okay? Because I hid something. But you know, sometimes we don't look at things very carefully. We don't look, we look at things very carefully in life. And it's really important that we look carefully. Now that if I had told you it was something round like that and you've seen it, if I had other ones, you'd find them more easily. That's kind of the way it works. 
Now, any of you deer hunters? Any, any deer hunters here? Do you ever, everything start looking like a deer after a while and it's not a deer sometimes? Yeah, see, it's the same kind of thing. And for me, it was like looking for mushrooms. Oh, there's a, there's a morel mushroom. So, but anyway, so uh, I don't know how you guys split that. I only have one of them. But, but one of the things that we learn in faith is to learn to look through a life differently, through a spiritual lens, through the lens that Jesus gives us. So, you know, and, and in life in general, we don't look carefully enough at things, the small flowers, the beautiful things that God puts before us. So, guys, let's have a word of prayer, and then we'll send you back. God, thank you for these two young friends of mine. We pray, God, that you be with them, you bless them in this week ahead, and that they have an awesome week, okay? Thank you, guys. Hang in there. Thanks for coming up. That one actually worked. <laughs> you just never know. <laughs> so, and David was probably saying, what is Greg looking, what was he putting something earlier in the plant? So, you just never know, Dave. <laughs> Would you join me in a moment of prayer? Gracious, only God, may the words which I utter and the privilege that I now assume be acceptable in your sight. I designed a little shorter message for today, yay, so that you can, we can decorate the tree, and then have what? Fellowship. Now, the question I would like to ask is, on this particular Sunday, how do you see it, it, now? One of the great truisms in life is that we see what we're prepared to see, aren't we? Just like those guys are thinking, something round, they're thinking Christmas ornaments. Paul Tournier tells about a friend of, of his. He went out to his farm. And when they arrived, his friend suggested that they take a little walk and collect some non-toxic mushrooms for a mushroom mama. M mushrooms are really all the rage right now in terms of with their healing properties. This will take some time, Tournier thought. Look for mushrooms? We're not going to find any mushrooms. But he was wrong. His friend picked up a basket, and off they went, walking through tall grass. And his friend was, as he walked along, his friend was constantly bending down and picking up a mushroom. I, he, Tornier, he didn't see that. He, constantly bending down, picking up. Constantly bending down and picking up. He was the son of a food inspector. And, and like his father, he knew all about gourmet mushrooms. Tornier was astonished. In 10 minutes, the basket was full. 10 minutes. Tornier kept searching, but he couldn't find them. He wasn't trained to look for them. He realized then how true it is that one only sees what one is prepared to see. There were mushrooms all around, but he couldn't see them because he was not trained to see them. The other great truism, I think, is this. is related to this theme. What you see is what you get. I mean, how many times, I know there are all these things online that they have these optical illusion things. And they say, do you see the cat or whatever, you know, and it's kind of hidden, but you don't, then you have to look at it. What? I don't see it. Or where's Waldo? And you look for Waldo, the where's Waldo, that kind of stuff. If you see more good than bad, good is the likelihood of what you will get. But if you look through the lens of everything is bad and horrible, you can see that as well. Haggai was written to encourage the Jewish people to rebuild the temple which had been destroyed during the times of the Babylonian captivity. The temple lay in ruins. Haggai confronted the governor, the son of the high priest, and the remnant, what we call a remnant of Israel that was left, and he asked him a question. What is left among you that saw this house in its former glory? Then he followed this question with another. How do you see it now? The nation of Israel had been scattered. The holy temple had been reduced to rubble. That was the past. The question Haggai posed was not about the past, but about the future. How do you see it now? How do you see it in the future, in other words? In the first place, how do you see yourself? A well-known counselor notes that in counseling situations, individuals will, also make, will often make statements like, I'm just hard to get along with, or I just can't do this or that. And I would add to that being a therapist, that self-awareness is so lacking in so many people. They're aware of their external, but they're afraid to make the journey inside. 
and really see what's going on. They can't see it. The underlying message of these kinds of statements, if that this is the way they are and there's no way to change them. I mean, one of the things, one of my pet peeves as you get to know me, is that people saying, oh, I can never change, or he or she can never change. People can change. I've got incredible stories. A good friend of mine, he's still alive. Um, when we were in serving the church, and I was a youth minister in a very large congregational church on Lake Minnetonka, uh, outside of Minneapolis, and um, the person who was head of the youth group was a, uh, uh, the adult supervisor was a recovering alcoholic, and is recovering to this day. Doesn't drink alcohol. And he's a man full of joy. He's a man full of joy. In fact, one time, uh, to digress this a little bit, we had a fundraiser. There's a, so a box social downstairs. And Hank and I, I will let you in on this secret. Hank and I, he, he, he likes smoking cigars, but he, he had an unsmoked one. We were in Fellowship Hall. We both put on coconut bikinis, grass skirts, and did a hula routine to raise money for the church. Now, don't get any ideas. Don't get any ideas. But, you know, he saw life differently. He was a joy and still is to be around. I'm, I'm glad he's still alive. The underlying message of these statements is this is the way things are and they will never change. As long as we believe we cannot change, the odds are against us. Once we make up our minds that there is hope, the whole world becomes possible. There's a true story excuse me, about a young, about a mother of a small child named Walter who was told by her doctor, your son has infantile, infantile paralysis. He will never walk again. And in some cases that may be true because I know we got medical people here um, and, and back there as well. But maybe that is what the doctor saw for Walter, but that is not what his mother saw. With determination, she would massage Walter's legs, soaking them in hot compresses. And she went above and beyond, you know, providing the care. Until he was able to walk and even run. I don't know what his malady was that caused this. But one day after watching boys competing in a high jump at a high school track meet, Walter said to himself, you know, I want to become the world champion high jumper. Here's a kid who couldn't walk at first. Absurd, right? Well, that's a nice dream. It's good to have those goals. To the world, perhaps, but, but that is how Walter's mother helped him see himself. You know, I mean, we, we close ourselves off so much. There's a lot in this kind of message of Walter for our lives as well. Years passed. Walter did compete in high school and then college. He married, but he still competed. One day in an indoor track meet, Walter cleared the high jump bar at six feet, 11 and one half inches. A kid who could not walk. When the official placed the bar at six feet, 11 and five eighths inches, the crowd recognized that it represented a new world record at the time. On the first try, Walter tipped the bar and it fell to the, fell to the, fell to the mat with him. It was on the same, same as on the second try, but in these kinds of sporting events, because I did track and field, you get, usually get three attempts at something, uh, unless it's a, a running event. Uh, but as he stood back for his third and final attempt, Walter pictured himself going over that bar, that new height. I mean, you ever tried measuring six feet, 11 and a half inches? I mean, thinking, I'm gonna jump over that. I don't know how tall he was. A few minutes later, the feat is accomplished the boy they thought would never walk became a world high jump champion. I mean, obviously these are very rare and unique circumstances, but don't stories like this give us a sense of hope and inspiration? Most of us do not see ourselves as world high jump champions, I don't. Still, it's important for us to ask ourselves, what do we see? A victim? A misfit? Somebody with no capability to make a difference in somebody else's life? We have enormous potential with our ability to love as God has given us to change people's lives. Our next question is, how do you see the world? Admittedly, we look at the world right now with what's going on in the Middle East and Ukraine, Sudan, all of the other places, and we think, my word, what a mess, and it is. Coach John Madden, the late Coach John Madden, 
A beautiful example. I, I miss John Madden on Thanksgiving Day, you know, when he would always do the, the, the game. He would have probably done the Packer game when they played the Lions and beat them, right, Ron? Yes. Um, but to, but he, he gives a, a beautiful example of the effects of perception on performance in a book that he wrote some time ago called Knee, K-N-E-E, -E, Knee. He tells about Ray Worshing, who was a kicker at the time for the San Francisco 49ers. It seems that Worshing didn't even look at the goalpost when he lines up to kick a field goal. In fact, he never even looks at the goalpost, according to the story. The quarterback has to tell him if a kick is successful. I mean, you can probably hear the crowd either boo or sigh or, or yay or cheer. Madden wants to ask him, if you don't look at, how do, how do you do it? How do you aim if you don't look at those goalposts? I just look at the hash marks, said Worshing. They tell me all I need to know. It's genius, folks. It really is. Men goes on to note, because I played football, is right. The hash marks, those chalk lines about are 23 yards inside each sideline are 18 and a half feet apart. The same width as a goal post. In a sense, the goal posts come right out of those hash marks. So he just lines it up in that big space. The farther away you are, the narrower the ghost posts look. Wershing explains. But the hash marks always look wide. If you think about that for a moment, you will see the brilliance of that kind of thought and how it overcomes intimidation. Oh, I can't make this. Why concentrate on the narrow goal post instead of the wide hash marks? And lastly and most importantly, we must ask ourselves, how do we see God? Haggai asks the people, how do you see it now? And then he makes this declaration of faith. Yet now take courage, says the Lord, for I am with you. A woman was struggling in the darkness to make an important decision. She didn't want to make a serious mistake. Too much was at stake for herself and her family. She felt lonely and confused, alone and afraid to make this important choice by herself. Then in the middle of the night, she prayed. The next morning... She emerged from her long night of struggle, confident and ready to choose with clarity. She said, as I faced the future, I did not know which way to turn. I felt cold and lonely and afraid. Then in the early hours of the morning, in the stillness of my room, I reached out my hand, and she felt a presence. She did. Take it. This is what we all yearn for, isn't it? to reach her hands out into the darkness and to have someone, that someone, take it. I pray that we can prepare ourselves to see the best as we prepare for this season of Advent. Knowing that quite often what we see is what we get. How do you see yourself? And most importantly, how do you see God and God's presence in your life? God is a personal God. Jesus prayed, Abba, Daddy. Yet now take courage, says the Lord, for I am with you always to the end of the age. And I leave by saying, O come, O come, Emmanuel. Would you join me in a moment of prayer? Gracious and loving God. Sometimes we need new sight. The way we look at things, sometimes God is dark hopeless, confusing. Sometimes we feel we're all alone. And when we, we go through life, God, we, we, we don't notice the small things, the beautiful things that you created and continue to create for all of us. So we don't apprehend the, the, the fullness and the beauty of life. Help us, God, to see that. Help us to know that when we look to you, when we look within ourselves, in our heart, you are there, reaching out to us, touching us, helping us to see things in new and more hopeful ways. So help us, God. Amen. At this time, I'd like to ask what prayers of joy or concern do you have? And Patty, I'm going to start with you before I forget. So shout it out, and I'll try to repeat it.
Is it Eileen? Eileen. Eileen. A rare form of cancer, correct? So I can repeat that for people Blood who... Blood cancer. Blood cancer? Okay, thank you, Patty. And you, as a family, are in our prayers as well. So please keep Eileen in your prayers. Eileen? Christ in your mercy. Yeah, in our prayer. So keep Eileen in, in, in our prayers. Other prayers of joy or concern this morning? Prayers of thanksgiving. Anything? A lot to be thankful for, right? Anybody here have a bad Thanksgiving? I'm, I, <laughs> I knew I'd get you to laugh. I wasn't very funny today. It, I'm, I'm so thankful for all of you, seriously, in the support that you uh, have shown Grace and I. And I'm, support, and, and I'm also thankful for Grace, who stuck with me for 47 years as of the 27th. So... <laughs> I know she put up with me that long, but anyway. No, for her, not me. <laughs> uh, so anyway, so uh, maybe she'll make one of my favorite meals or something. No, we, I'll probably cook out. We'll do something. So being mindful of that, and obviously with what's going on in Israel and the Palestinians and Ukraine, which is kind of forgotten right now in the war, um, you know, they... Um, still goes on there. So in other places of the world that we don't really pay much attention to, but, but those that we've lifted up, like Eileen and others who are struggling, and those who we don't even know who maybe didn't have a joyful Thanksgiving and aren't really looking forward to much. We need to be mindful of them in those ways that we can help them. So join me in prayer, would you? Gracious and loving God, we thank you. We thank you that in this country of ours, we can celebrate freely. We can have a diversity of viewpoints, which is important in the country in which we live, because that is the experiment we all are. And we thank you for the ability to have a thanksgiving, not just nationally, but, but more personally, that we can have a thanksgiving with just whether it's with ourselves, it's with other people, and family, and rejoice for all of our abundance that we do have. God, there are so many problems in the world, so many hurting people. We pray, God, that as we prepare ourselves for the season of Advent, that we can some way touch other people's lives, that we can help them to see in new ways that life is not a dead-end street for them, that there is hope, and we can help provide a sense of direction to that new hope. We thank you, God, for the privilege to worship. I thank you for this congregation, this family. And now to, to, we together, God, pray the prayer that Jesus did teach his disciples by praying ourselves, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. At this time, freely has God blessed all of us, beyond measure. It's important that we give thanks at this time, so we give thanks uh, to God in our morning offering at this time.
gracious and always loving God, we would ask you accept these gifts that we, your people, do offer up to you. Grant the causes to which they're devoted be causes of love, given to your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray, we share, and we live. Amen. sweet communion with those whose rest is one. Oh, happy ones and holy, oh, give us grace that we, like them the meek and holy, on high may dwell with thee. And now by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go. Oh.